Hey everybody, I'm Matt Dolan with Dolan Divorce Lawyers in Connecticut. And today what I'm going to talk about is filing a motion to modify in Connecticut family court. So a motion to modify is usually filed either while a divorce or custody action is pending or after a divorce or custody action is already concluded. And the normal motions to modify that are filed are modifications seeking a change to alimony, modification seeking a change to the existing child support order, or a modification seeking a change to the existing custody orders. There can be modifications uh, seeking changes to other provisions, but those are the main ones. So those are what I'm going to talk about for the purposes of these this video. Um, so let's get into it and I'll share my screen here. So the, the statutes that are relevant are uh, 46B-86, which talks about modifying alimony or child support orders. And then um, 25, oh, I'm sorry, let me see here. We've got 46B-56, which talks more about uh, modifying existing custody orders. Um, so you can look through those statutes. They're pretty verbose and, and long, so we're not going to get into them in too much detail. What we are going to look at is 25-26, which is the Connecticut practice book section that, you know, it again talks about filing a motion to modify. But what, what I'm going to point your attention to is specifically, you know, what the actual motion has to contain, what the form has to contain. So it says that each motion for modif <coughs> modification of custody, visitation, alimony, or child support mm -hmm. shall state clearly in the caption of the motion, whether it is a pendente lite motion or a post-judgment motion. So pendente lite uh, is a motion that is filed seeking modification during litigation. So like while a divorce agreement while a divorce is pending, there might be a child support order that wife pays husband $150 per week, for example. If you are seeking a modification of that order while the divorce is pending, you file a motion for modification pendente lite. Or if you're filing, you know, you file a post-judgment motion for modification if you're filing the motion after the divorce is over, after the existing custody case is order, over. Um, the statute or the practice book section goes on to say that each motion for modification shall state the specific factual and legal basis for the claimed modification and shall include the outstanding order and date thereof to which the mo motion for modification is addressed. Um, so generally speaking, the basis for a modification is you have to, you have to show a substantial change in circumstance. You have to show that there has been some change in circumstance that warrants a modification of the existing orders. So let me show you what the actual motion should look like. Um, there is a separate court form that you can use, um, but you know the court form can be pretty limited in what you can put in it. So we usually like to kind of type out a separate word motion. Um, so let's start with a caption. Uh, you know, if you're the plaintiff, you put, you know, whoever's filing the motion, you put plaintiff or defendant here. So in this example, it's pla plaintiff's motion for modification. And then again, you have to put whether it's pendente lite or post judgment, as I explained before. So you, you know, just getting into the text, you say the plaintiff or obviously the defendant, if you're the defendant in the above captioned matter hereby moves to modify the court orders, the court's orders set forth in the, you know, either an agreement or, you know, if there was no agreement, it's court order. So here you're putting the existing orders. So you're saying the existing agreement dated, you know, you put the date in and entry number and you insert the ent entry number. You can find the entry number if you go to the judicial website and you'll see, you know, if you look up your case online, you'll see all of the individual pleadings, um, you know, every motion that's been filed in the court, and it'll have a little number next to it. Um, so you insert the entry number. And then, you know, you might be seeking a modification of multiple, multiple orders or agreements. So, you know, you don't, this doesn't have to be two, it can be one, it can be four orders that you're seeking to modify. It can be as many as you need. And then you have to put the basis, you know, you have to put 
you have to explain why you're filing the motion. So you put in support hereof, the plaintiff sets forth as follows. And then you're gonna start by putting the existing language that you're seeking to modify. So, you know, paragraph, you know, paragraph whatever, you know, 3.5 of the agreement or court order, and then you put the date and the pleading number states, you know, for example, the wife shall pay the husband $350 per week child support, or the, you know, wife has primary physical custody of the child and the husband has parenting time every other Friday to Sunday, you know, so whatever the existing orders that you're seeking to modify, you're going to list those here. And they can be, you know, they can be multiple, there can be multiple topics in one motion to modify, you know, you might be seeking a modification of custody and child support. So the, if you're doing that, you would list, you know, all of the relevant paragraphs that talk about the existing custody orders, and then all of the paragraphs that talk about the existing child support orders. <clears throat> so you put all the existing orders, and then you write that since the entry of the aforementioned court orders, there have been material and substantial changes, changes in circumstances as follows. And then you have to explain what the change in circumstance is that warrants the modification. So I just put some examples here. You know, the if you're a plaintiff seeking a modification, you know, a downward modification of alimony or child support, you might say the plaintiff has lost his job and therefore his income has decreased. That's a change in circumstance. Or, you know, maybe you're seeking a modification of alimony or child support because the defendant's income has increased. So, you know, if that's the case, you would just state that the defendant's income has increased. Or maybe something's going on with your child that, you know, is a reason why you're seeking a modification of the existing order. So you might write that the minor child has not been doing well in school and her mental health has been declining while in the custody of the plaintiff. You know, that's another example. I think kind of a catch all on custody is just, you know, you say it's in the best interest of the child to, and then insert whatever you're looking for. Um, and then, you know, so those are the reasons that you're seeking the, you know, those are the changes in circumstance that warrant the modification. And then here you put wherefore, based on the foregoing, the plaintiff respectfully moves that the court, and then you list exactly what change you're looking for. So you might put that you want the court to modify the parenting plan so that the child resides primarily with the defendant, or you're seeking that they modify the legal custody order so that the defendant has sole legal custody or at least final decision-making. Or you might be seeking that the court decrease the present child support obligations of the plaintiff. And then we usually put in this catch-all at the end that says any any further order that the court deems fair and equitable. Um, and that, you know, allows for some flexibility at the end. Um, so that's the content of what you want to put in a motion to modify. And then, you know, you put your signature here. And then depending on whether it's a pendente lite motion or a post-judgment motion, um, you either put a order for hearing a notice like this, or you put a certificate certificate of service. Um, so if it's a post judgment motion, then you put the order for hearing note and notice because you know there's no if there's no pending litigation, then you need this because the court has to assign a court date. So you would fill in you know the person who has to be served and you know whether they're the plaintiff or the defendant, and then you'd insert their name. And then the judicial district, um, you know, you'd insert the judicial district and then the address of the court. And then this you leave blank because the, you know, you file the motion to modify and then the court will fill in the date on which the motion is scheduled. And then after you have that date assignment, you serve the other party. You have to have a marshal serve them. So you have to do that, this order for hearing and notice if it's a post judgment motion for modification. But if it's a pendente lite uh, motion for modification, you just do, you don't have to actually serve the other party with the marshal. You can just do a certificate of service and um, you know, just serve them by email or mail. 
And in that scenario, you just put you know, the date and then their contact info where you are serving them. So those are the basics of how to file a motion to modify and what the motion to modify has to look like. Um, you will be, if you go to our website, you can get the copies of these forms um, in the video section of our website. You should be able to get copies of the forms of this kind of sample motions. And if you have any other questions about filing a motion to modify, you can feel free to contact our office.